Now that we've talked about gas exchange in humans, we have to talk about gas exchange in plants. And remember with humans, we had said that humans have a respiratory system. It takes in oxygen, it gets rid of CO2. Now we need to look at plants. The first thing we're gonna look at is this picture. So you'll notice in this picture, we have two different scenarios, day and night. Our arrows are color coded. So if we take a look during the day, we have these blue arrows that represent photosynthesis. So for photosynthesis, the plant needs CO2 and it gets rid of oxygen. You also notice we have pink arrows, which represents cellular respiration. So cellular respiration requires oxygen and produces CO2. So remember photosynthesis is to make the sugar, cellular respiration is to make the energy. At night, when we no longer have sunlight, we can't do photosynthesis. So we're only doing cellular respiration. So plants need not only oxygen, but also CO2. So they're a little bit different than humans. So the first thing we're gonna write down is that plants need CO2 for photosynthesis and oxygen for cellular respiration. We said that the air is made up of mostly nitrogen. It has CO2 and oxygen in it. So when we breathe in, we get a mix of all of those um, gases in the air we breathe. Same thing with plants. When plants open up um, their leaves or their stems, they're getting a mix of all of that air too, that oxygen, the CO2, the nitrogen. And then they can use the CO2 for photosynthesis. They can use the oxygen for cellular respiration. Now we're gonna take a look at how those gases get into the plant. So in our roots, the gases are gonna move in using diffusion. So diffusion is moving from a high concentration to a low concentration. So think we have a lot of particles here and few inside the root, so they're gonna move in. You'll notice in this picture, I have mostly oxygen going in here and CO2 going out. If we take a peek back, oxygen going in, CO2 going out, that's for cellular respiration. Well, notice my roots are underground. They don't need to do photosynthesis because they don't have access to sunlight. So even though they're going to be taking in CO2 and oxygen, they're mostly just going to be doing cellular respiration. If you're wondering where does that oxygen and air come from because they're underground, well, when soil is in our ground, we have little air spaces, and that's where the oxygen and CO2 end up. So even if our soil is really far packed down, we still have opportunities for air air spaces in between those roots. So that's roots. Let's talk about stems now. So in our stems, we have little openings, okay? Um, leaves, we talked about stomata, we haven't gotten there yet, but in our stems, we have little openings and they're called lenticels. If you take a look at a branch, next time you look at a branch, you'll see these little white spots. Sometimes they're white, sometimes they're a different color. Those are little openings to let gases in and out. Because remember, stems, they need energy too, so they're gonna need oxygen as well. You can also find it on fruits. So if we look at your apple, these little white spots, those are openings for gas exchange. Potatoes, these brown spots, the reason they're brown is because the air is getting in and it's doing a chemical reaction um, and reacting with the potato. If you leave a whole cut potato out, the whole thing will turn brown, kind of like an apple. Um, if you ever look at avocados or pears or mangoes, you can see the little specks on those as well. So these are called lenticels. And in trees, um, this is like the trunk of a tree, they oftentimes get a lot bigger. So if you're looking at the trunk of a tree, you'll often see these little slits. Those are for gas exchange. So roots, we have um, diffusion going into roots. We have lenticels for the stem. When we get up to the leaves, we have the openings that are called stomata. So these are the little openings. If we take a look underneath a microscope, this is what they will look like. So the singular of stomata is stoma. So you might've heard that word. And they have these cells around the outside. They look like a macaroni cell, or if you put two of them together, kind of look more like a circle. Those are our guard cells. So before we get to our guard cells, reminder that stomata allow for gas exchange, right? Oxygen, CO2, but they're also doing transpiration. They're allowing that water to come out of the plant. So 
So in this picture here, we've got the water being absorbed by the roots, it's traveling up the plant. Remember that transpiration is pulling that water up through the plant. And this can be good and bad. Um, so it helps get water up through the plant, but we're also losing some, which as a plant, you gotta wait for rain in order to get more water. So that water is super important because around the stomata, we have guard cells. And guard cells are going to need water in order to expand and fill up. So here you see water leaving. When water leaves, these cells shrink and they kind of close to close the stomata. In your activity, you looked at um, when stomata are open and when stomata are closed. So they're typically open during the day. That's when they can get sunlight for photosynthesis. At night, they're typically closed because they don't have sunlight for photosynthesis. So they don't need those gases to do photosynthesis. So knowing that our guard cells need water to open and close, what do you think would happen if they didn't have a lot of water? So in the desert, what type of plant would be found in the desert? One with a lot of guard cells or one with few guard cells? You might think to yourself, well, the desert is really dry. There's not a lot of rain. So they're not gonna have access to a lot of water to be able to open and close those guard cells. Also, they're not gonna need to release as much water to suck up as much water through their roots. There's gonna be less transpiration happening. So they're gonna have few guard cells. Harder time for them to open because there's less water available. We're also having less transpiration happening. In addition, over time, these plants have evolved to have fewer guard cells or guard cells underneath the surface of their leaves to prevent that evaporation, right? That transpiration, that water leaving. Because if you're a plant in the desert, you don't wanna allow a ton of water to leave because there's not a lot of water in the soil to pull up. If we take a look at the rainforest then, what if we have lots of water? You think we would have lots of guard cells or few guard cells? Well, if there's lots of water, we have lots of water to open those guard cells also means we can do transpiration. It's okay if we let some water evaporate, transpire, transpiration out of our leaf because we have a ton of water around that we can just use to suck up and replace that from the soil.